<laughs> we shall not live our days wondering if we could have saved more. We face this as we always have. Together. You have to get everyone out. He's coming. If only you knew the future we have in store. While you X-Men have been holding hands, we've been placing dominoes. You think there's really gonna be a war? <laughs> Welcome back, everyone. It's Charlie. Marvel just released a trailer for the next couple of episodes of X-Men 97. I don't think all this footage is just from episode 6. Some of it probably from later in the season. There's a bunch of Easter eggs, more cameos from other characters like Captain America. If you don't remember X-Men the Animated Series or you didn't watch the Spider-Man 1990s animated series, I'll explain how Captain America is canon to this series and what's going on with the Avengers characters during this part of the timeline because this is all taking place in the 90s still. I do not understand. I do. I, I understood that reference. If you're brand new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the episodes. Really good news, too. The person who's the producer on all these Marvel animated, these Marvel TV projects in general, the live action stuff, too, said that they have a lot of the work on X-Men 97 Season 2 already finished and that they're also working on Season 3 right now, too. Episode 6 is next week. It's going to be the second part of the Storm episode from Episode 4 with Forge and her trying to get her powers back. It's just called Life Death Part 2 with them having to defeat the adversary. There might be like a B and C storyline with them following up on the attack on Genosha too, so I'll talk about that later in the video. The real big thing in the trailer though is the Captain America cameo scene. A lot of people surprised by this, I think maybe because they didn't see the original episodes. Captain America could be part of the B storyline in episode 6. It's not super clear. He might be from a future episode. But during the scene, notice that Captain America throws his shield at the feet of one of the X-Men. The animation makes it look like it's right out of the What If series too, just because of the way they polish the animation on X-Men 97. It's based on the animation from What If, but with a couple extra filters that they put on it to make it look more like X-Men the animated series. But the technology that they're using to animate it is still based on the What If animation. But in this Captain America scene, notice when he throws his shield at the feet of one of the X-Men, the yellow boots make it seem like it's actually Cyclops. There are only two X-Men that wear boots that are super bright yellow like this, and it's Cyclops and Rogue. And Captain America would have zero, zero chance against Rogue. She's probably way too hard up after Gambit's death too, like she'd be busy with what's happening in the aftermath of Genosha. So don't think Captain America would be trying to intimidate Rogue by throwing his shield at her feet to warn her. But it totally feels normal that he'd have a standoff moment like a bro-off moment with Cyclops. And remember, Cyclops was not on Genosha like he was back with the other X-Men. It's not super clear why Cyclops is here specifically, but notice they're in a snowy place with a bunch of rundown cabins that look like no one's lived here in a long time with some military gear. This might be an old military base. You notice Captain America's motorcycle is in the background here. No idea why Cyclops will be trying to meet Captain America here or if they're just both on different missions looking for something here and they just happen to run into each other or if Cyclops specifically goes looking for Captain America and finds him here. It probably has something to do with the aftermath of the massacre on Genosha. Like they're probably trying to figure out who's really behind this and just following clues all over the world. RIP to Gambit and all those other mutants. I'll talk about them later in the video. I have a couple of theories about what really happened with Gambit and some of the other mutants, especially Magneto and who was really behind the attack. They've been a couple clues in earlier episodes. But the big reason why Captain America is canon to X-Men the Animated Series, X-Men 97, tangentially, is because he originally showed up during Season 5, Old Soldiers, in a crossover with Wolverine. Wolverine and Captain America fought together during World War II. At the time, Wolverine was fighting in the Canadian Army, though. By the way, if you're Logan, I'm your backup. I'm Captain America. I never would have guessed. The original episode was Wolverine and Captain America teaming up with them searching for Red Skull. Like it was a big Red Skull episode. In this universe, like in the X-Men the Animated Series universe, Wolverine was fighting Red Skull during World War II, just like Captain America. During the present day of that episode, they'd been searching for Red Skull for 50 years, who'd been hiding out. Wolverine wasn't part of Captain America's Howling Commandos, like I said, though. He was part of the Canadian Army. They just happened to be both fighting in World War II, both looking for the Red Skull. 
At the end of that episode, Red Skull did wind up escaping them, so he's still alive in the events of X-Men 97 universe, able to come back at some point too. They had a habit of people surviving in that universe, so there's like so many characters that could just come back in present day randomly. But because the 90s Spider-Man series is also canon to X-Men animated series and X-Men 97, a lot of you have been asking if Captain America coming back on X-Men 97 will address what happened to him at the end of the Spider-Man 90s series. That's actually the last time that we saw the animated version of this Captain America. He's meant to be this version of Captain America. If you didn't realize, they'd already confirmed on X-Men 97 that the Spider-Man 90 series was canon to all of this. This article by Peter Parker and Eddie Brock, they're the same Spider-Man and Venom of the 1990s series, exact same versions. The last time we saw this version of Captain America was during the Secret Wars episodes of Spider-Man the Animated Series. This is him standing next to Storm. That's Storm from X-Men the Animated Series. How did we get here? You have won. Good has triumphed over evil. You will all be returned to your rightful places on Earth, and you will retain no memory of this event. We saw the Beyonder about to send them home, and then that was the last we saw of them at all, and then they canceled the Spider-Man series, so they never really explained what happened to him after this. Here's some really good news a lot of you have been asking for, too. There's been a lot of talk of Marvel doing more revival series of old animated series set during the 90s part of the timeline, meaning that there is a solid chance that they do a revival for Spider-Man the 90s series. There's been a lot of talk of them just exploring more of this 90s part of the universe set inside the universe of X-Men the Animated Series. So like it'd be canon with X-Men 97, like they had all these crossover series in this part of the timeline. The other new trailer footage here starts with Wolverine and Nightcrawler versus a ton of Sentinels flying at them. No idea which episode this is. Notice he's still using his sword to fight. There's another scene of him inside a house fighting with his sword again too. This scene of Storm carrying Forge, who's all waylaid with all the bandages on her horse, is from episode 6 next week. It's just the next part of their cliffhanger from episode 4, with them facing the adversary. Pretty easy to assume that she will get her powers back. Like, they're not going to do Storm dirty like that before the end of the season. Like, she will eventually get her powers back. Not totally sure where Jubilee is in this scene, but notice the reflection in her sunglasses when she pulls them down. This is a big ball of energy she's staring at, so it just seems like she's in the middle of some big fight. This is another new scene, totally different place of Beast jumping off the roof of a normal house in a suburb fighting someone somewhere. I love the way there's just like a normal looking suburb, he just happens to be on the rooftop. This is another new scene of Jean Grey, like the real Jean Grey, using her telekinesis to levitate herself in a bunch of boulders during a fight somewhere. One of the things they've been doing to differentiate Jean Grey from Madeline Pryor is visualize their powers a little bit differently. When Madeline Pryor uses her powers, you see a little bit more of the green energy as opposed to Jean Grey where you see this bluish energy. Jean also wears the more modern version of her X-Men suit. Madeline Pryor does not. That's another big change. And they wear their hair differently. And I don't know where this came from, but people have been posting all kinds of memes using Zendaya for this. Like this Wolverine, Cyclops, Jean Grey love triangle stuff. It's hilarious. Whole lot of S-tier X-Men soap opera energy going on here from the comics. Then addressing the dead mutants in the room, the attack on Genosha, a lot of theories about who was really behind this, because the episode was adapted from the E is for Extinction storyline in the comics. Basically, the same thing winds up happening. The Magneto becomes leader of Genosha soon after it's attacked by the Wild Sentinel. But in the original version of that story, it was actually Cassandra Nova, the evil twin of Professor X, who was behind the attack. She's actually going to be the main villain of Deadpool and Wolverine, but I don't think this X-Men episode is connected with Deadpool and Wolverine. What they're probably doing is changing that storyline for the TV show. A lot of you've been asking about Bastion, too, because he might have had something to do with it, and he had a couple cameo scenes in previous episodes. He might have been the person that Cable was really talking about when he showed up to Madeline Pryor saying, He is coming. The first time we saw Bastion, first cameo scene was on Forge's picture on the wall of his lab. He's the person that's covered up on the left of Forge here with the doctor. Then during episode 5, literally moments before the attack went down, you can see Magneto clocking Bastion warily on the upper level. This is Bastion at the bottom of the frame, like it's a blink and you'll miss it kind of cameo scene, super quick. Now remember how Forge told Storm about his dark origin, how he worked with the government and helped them develop the Sentinel technology, anti-mutant technology, basically. This starts to get into Bastion's origin story, too, and how he's tied up with the Sentinels. Big time travel character, when he says he's coming, like I said, could have something to do with Bastion because of what happens to Bastion in the comics and his origin story. 
If you're not a big comic book reader, Bastion is a human sentinel hybrid sort of overarching villain. This is really crazy time travel based origin story with the same vibes as Cable. He was basically created when a Nimrod unit came into contact with Master Mold and the programming got fused and they forgot their origin. If you remember, they did Nimrod during X-Men the Animated Series. He was a prototype advanced sentinel from the distant future. So his origin is in the same vein of what they're doing right now on X-Men 97 with the Sentinel characters. We've seen in the past that they've changed the original comic book stories they're adapting, like the Madeline Pryor story was changed a bunch for the TV show, so it's possible that instead of Cassandra Nova being behind the Wild Sentinel, it has something to do with Bastion in the future. Either way, Cable will be back. It sounds like he was going to try and come back again to present day, like he's just going to keep trying until he gets it right. Talking more about the many, many deaths, RIP to everyone, I do like the theory that Leech briefly took away Magneto's powers and that's why the three-headed wild sentinel from the comics thought that it had killed Magneto because it didn't detect his power signature coming from him anymore. I think that Gambit was meant to be the only major main X-Men character death and they just want you to think that Magneto was dead. There was a scene from the very first trailers they released for the series of them at a funeral lowering a coffin into the ground. That might be Gambit's funeral with all the X-Men thinking that he's dead. There are a couple ways that he could come back, which I think that he will eventually, like I definitely think he will be back. There's the straight out time travel explanation, like Cable finds a way to change the past to prevent him from dying somehow, or the more twisty explanation that is part of Gambit unlocking his Omega level powers from the comics and he'll just come back as his more powerful form. Way back in the comics, Gambit had Mr. Sinister perform an operation on him when he was younger that wound up stunting his true power levels without him realizing it. Later on, he winds up crossing over with an alternate universe version of himself and to power himself up even more, he has Mr. Sinister perform another operation to unlock his true power potential. He winds up becoming an Omega level mutant capable of controlling all kinetic energy on a much bigger scale. He can also turn into pure energy. He could fly. And this might be part of them paying off the Easter eggs from episode 5. Remember when Magneto made fun of him on the plane for being the only X-Men who could not fly? And at the end of the episode, you see him charge and blow up the entire Godzilla-sized kaiju Wild Sentinel. Way bigger act of power than we've ever seen Gambit do on the TV show. So early theory, his body might just be in the process of unlocking his true Omega level potential. And here's the other payoff too. Once he does, he might also be able to touch Rogue the same way that Magneto is able to touch her without her draining all of their powers and they'll be able to be together like a real couple. Gambit is horny as ever, horny on main. But if there's any other Easter eggs or references you spotted in this trailer that I didn't talk about in the video, just write them below in the comments. In my full episode six video, we'll post next week after they release it. So be sure to enable alerts for my channel so you don't miss that. There were a bunch of Marvel trailers at CinemaCon. Click here for my Deadpool and Wolverine CinemaCon trailer and click here for my Captain America 4 CinemaCon trailer. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.